all right you abhijit uh, do you know uh, the difference between mutable and immutable infrastructure yes so mutable infrastructure are where the changes are too frequent and we call it in this deployment here we don't create the whole infrastructure it's just, mm -hmm. and we just updated the versions so for our patch releases we use that thing immutable are when we are like recreating everything from the scratch like in we got on the major version release at that point of time we have a lot of dependencies got changed so we have to recreate everything so again this when is do we use, use when in which patch. scenario we should use immutable and I can give you example through our latest biggest change that is Elastic so We are mm -hmm. having on-prem servers. And when we go through our Elastic Cloud, every application has the dependency. I have to change the endpoints. Okay. So we go and there goes the major version release. Right. So whatever was supported with our minor uh, with our like mutable infrastructure is not possible. Even if we update, few things left behind. So we decided we will create. A blueprint deployment strategy. We will create infrastructure, and after that, we will like redeploy our whole thing. So there, we use the immutable yeah. And for normal bug fixes, or for features, we are using mutable in this deployment. We don't, we not create, recreate our infra. We just revise our architect version and whatever. In in cloud, so it but, depends but on the in, in in a cloud where you create and destroy, which which is the better approach. Uh, can you reframe your question, please? Because what is the better approach in a cloud environment? In a see, obviously, if you go to theoretical explanation, immutable is the best because everyone will suggest recreate everything. But in but in practical, where the clients are live, we got small maintenance window, not not possible because we are good on blue green. If we breach that thing, our maintenance window, mm -hmm. the investigation will be set up. So in that case, we can't just do that. OK, yeah, that brings to my next question. Like what is the what is this blue green and different deployment uh, strategies? And do, do you know which one do you follow? I follow both. So like one is in place. So in place, suppose I have a web server and there I just added a feature or we just provided a bug fix. So we just revise our artifact versions that is in place. We are not, not revising everything when we go for the blue grid. So if suppose example, when we are using .NET 3 and .NET 3 is getting deprecated, we decided to upgrade it to .NET 6. In that case, in place is not useful because we can't use the same container. Once I did that, I start getting the whole exception thing. And then I realized I just rolled back the changes. So in that case, we have to recreate. So in the blue green, a new version will be created. It will reroute the traffic and then destroy the older one. And we can also set the wait time, like sometimes like 24 hours or whatever. So in case if new the customer or the client is not satisfied with our chain, they want to backport. We'll provide that thing. So Did you ever had to uh, roll back your changes in production? Yes, I did. Can what I tell was the experience? Okay, so we decided to upgrade our so earlier when we deploy our event playbook. So we got our service was subscription as standard. When we start getting the live traffic, so by default in standard, it will support maximum 5 GB the queue size. But we are going for live and we are have expecting huge traffic. We are trying to upgrade to premium. At that point of time, 80 GB is the maximum size that is that will provide it. Mm -hmm. So what we did, I just changed my codes, applied everything, it's okay. So in next maintenance window, the, another application got updated and it again redeployed that queues. Okay. So what happened first time deployment is set to 5 GB, 80 GB. Next deployment again set back to 5 GB. No one is wrong there. So we have to investigate that problem. So we just found that we need to backport and we have to do the blue for that. Because we can't just do it because earlier I told them this is a minor release. We can do it in place, mm -hmm. but it, later on we found out no, we can't do that. We need to, either we need to do hot fixes like create a, like ask ask them to do it manually on the portal and freeze our deployment in that hot fix, or we can just do the blue green. So manager understand this. They given me a separate window, 
an interceptor window he are there any features in um, in in azure devops to help with this kind of rollback uh, there is a bit of uh, lag i can't hear you all right just hold on i think can you hear me now i can hear you but your screen has sort of frozen for me a uh, kind of turn off the video if connection is not clear you can talk about uh, voice no no now it's fine now it's fine all right you are back now yeah so i was checking with uh, is there any feature in azure devops that you know you are using for rollback uh, purpose so for rollback purpose in build feature i'm not much aware about that but the strategy we are using when we create a release we got option to select the resources all right so if we want to roll back while creating the release we create a resource option and select our required version of the artifact that we want to deploy so this is the one thing i really remember for now and if something advanced is there so i'm not aware about that okay um i wanted to check on uh, are, are you using any kind of uh, sentinel policies or anything in your uh, terraform environment yes we got the sentinel policies and it is mostly related to tags so what happened there was a lot of differences that like no one's know who deployed the thing which pipeline is that deployed which resources mm -hmm. so we deployed sentinel policies are basically does the policies as a code so for resource creation we need to meet certain specific like conditions after uh, if not meeting that criteria the group is not deployed so what we did like while creating any application we need to set up that like pipeline url this pipeline is deployed that particular resource so that type policy that type of policies i applied and there are a lot more that architect is implemented so i'm just inheriting those things okay okay Okay, so basically, you are enforcing tags should be there with resources. For that, you use Sentinel policy. Yes, uh, so see, like uh, the thing is like someone created a resource, and we don't know who wrote that. Tag. So every time we need to check, log into portal, need to check. So we decided we will enforce like a pipeline link. The pipeline release def release definition link should be used as a tag on every resource. So if anyone want to check, they will just click, and once we open the pipeline we will get no who deployed that thing what are the reason behind that and we can just track every activities and there was some by default organization level tag policy that they are like who is the application owner if it is a single tenant of application or multi tenant applications so that kind of policies are also there but mostly i work on the tag thing for sentinel policies for like creating i mean like there are more policy that we can't create our separate C, uh, vpc sorry vpc sorry the vnet because by default we get five vpc or sorry vnet in our software on one region and we can't just i mean like we don't need to i mean like what's that uh, we don't we don't require that much so we just apply the policy we can't simply create a vnet by our own even we writing the code the policy is declining us and for subnet also and there were a lot more so are, are, you, are you are you testing uh, abhijit are you testing your infrastructure after it has been created through terraform uh we call it deployment validation test and mm -hmm. mostly why, what i do like all the dependencies are help point we used to check but not using terraform honestly i was using invoke command uh, that is a core module for power cell so we just like the key the period tokens Sorry, uh, that was mandatory for us, but like I've done this one time. And after that, we got like our testers got like a deep level testing. So after every deployment, I mean, whenever I'm making changes, so they have to run the whole sanitary test and all. 
So that I was done by the separate team members. And I can't close my pull request in that all testing has completed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Oh, sorry. I was talking on mute. I was checking. Uh, do you test the infrastructure that you create? Yes, we always do our deployment validation test. But, but is that automated? Account. Yes, that was automated. Which which technology you use to test that? Uh, we use PowerShell invoke command. Okay. It's just like choose REST API calls because our application need VRL token. And seriously, I never explored through the Terraform whether we can do it or not. Okay. So what we do is we just get our client access ID and secret. We generate our VRL token and hitting the endpoint to test like if everything is deployed fine. Because on deployment side, infrastructure is so green, but application not booting up. So what we'll do, we'll just check the, the close, I mean, top level possibilities. And for other testing, like test us doing that. Mm -hmm. So we just okay. do the basic. So one. if if I at very high level, I understand your role is more of uh, uh, building these pipelines for different applications. Yes. And then do you move on to a new project from there, or your company has limited number of like some products, some specific pipelines, or do you then move to uh, another project? We and... always do POCs like my team like. Recently, I can tell you, like we are doing when Chat GP started in the market. Mm -hmm. So I've done POC on Azure, OpenAI, and Cognitive Search. So that was like we have Elastic Search as a backend. So we want to use OpenAI to generate Chat GP type response using Cognitive Search. And there are a lot of POCs that have done, like for Terraform Cloud, I've done that. It was not implemented, unfortunately. Right. For like our Elastic Search, I've done the POCs. And for our certificate manager, we are like using that. So there are a lot of them. So mostly we have done like one basically like explore the thing. And we got obviously getting the production tickets. So deployment when strategy is slow, we don't have I mean highlighted or step forward. So it was like slow, stable, and steady. Okay. One question around um, Azure DevOps and uh, Terraform that I wanted to ask was how do you handle the deployments across different Azure subscriptions and uh, different accounts you can say uh, from because Azure DevOps uh, will be in, Steve, I can in some you. you can't hear me. Are you there? Yes, Sanjeev, I'm there, but like, can can you just switch off the video so that like, we can talk? I think video is stopping the voice. Okay, is it is it better now? Yes, much better now. Okay, I I wanted to check like is is have how do you deploy using Terraform and Azure DevOps across different subscriptions? Do you maintain different state files or different pipelines for that? Oh, different pipeline, obviously, but. Whenever, like, suppose. Why obviously? Each, uh, for each. Uh, Why obviously? obviously? Because we have like 32 subscriptions. 32 mm -hmm. subscriptions are there. And right. for each, we need to create a separate uh, workspaces. So, workspace is like a virtual environment, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, something like Python virtual environment, create a mm -hmm. separate isolated environment. And there, based on our variables, .tf, we used to create different, different variables, .tf. To have different set of parameters of variables for each environment, so we are integrating both of the things. Okay, fine, uh, Abhijit. I think that's pretty much I wanted to uh, check. I think you have got good experience on Terraform and Azure DevOps uh, in general. You have handled quite complex yes. uh, scenarios. Usually you won't yes. see these kind of scenarios. Everybody handling on day to day basis. You have got excellent yes, even experience. Honestly, this is this is the, my first profile where I'm working closely to the developer and doing all the things. Before that, I was just like as a cloud engineer looking for touching for behind the client and all. 
So I really enjoyed working on this concept and that was really good and giving me a lot of learning. Right, right. Any, any question you have uh, so before we close the discussion? Uh, not a specific. Uh, no, not from my side. All right. No worries. If you don't have questions, then we will uh, stop the discussion. Um, and I will get back to you with the detailed feedback. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Abhijit. Thanks for taking time. Bye.